Oh, the outcrops you'll go, a Dr. Seuss-inspired geological adventure. Congratulations, today is a great day. You've got brains in your head, you've got a hammer in your hand. You're a geologist now, so go and explore the land. Up and down, left and right, your eyes will be drawn to every rock in sight. You've got boots on your feet, adventure is there for you to grab. Being a geologist is a treat, the whole world is your lab. You understand very well that ours is an amazing world. 4.6 billion years through space our home has whirled. Yes, a 4, a 6 and 8 zeros, it really has been here that long. 4,600 million times around the sun we have gone. Such deep time is really very hard for many people to grasp. A million years sounds like a lot, but it's really just a fraction of our past. Day after day, the earth always looks the same to most. But every time you sit atop a mountain or along the coast, you see the changes, slow and subtle they may be. You see the effect of gravity. You feel the power of the sea. The world is rich and alive to you, though it rarely moves very fast. And you know that the present will always be your key to the past. Look again at our green and blue planet. Can you see the oceans in the land? Continental crust is made of a rock called granite, with just a thin topping of soil, clay and sand. But from volcanoes deep under the oceans, black and heavy lava pours and pours. Basalt, derived from the Earth's mantle layer, is what makes up the sea floors. We see how this underwater basalt did flow by studying these most amazing lava pillows. An ophiolite is a huge chunk of oceanic crust that high into the mountains has been thrust. Oman, Oman is such a fantastic place to go. You can see incredible things walking on the moho. Some volcanoes are extinct, while others still erupt ash and lava. Volcanoes occur all over the world, even icy Antarctica. Big and small, old and new, near or very far, volcanoes really are incredibly spectacular. Igneous rocks come in fantastic shapes. Volcanoes make for such amazing landscapes. From towering columns and pillars to thick sills between beds. On Easter Island, volcanic rocks are carved into giant heads. But of course you all know that volcanoes are super hot. But what if I told you that actually they are not? Whilst a volcanic eruption can be a terrible disaster, some volcanoes only erupt mud rather than ash and lava. I do so love a mud volcano. In Azerbaijan, they're really quite cute. If you get a chance, you should go, but be sure to bring your gumboots. Some are warm, but others are icy cold. You can dip your hand in if you're so bold. They quietly gurgle, splutter and bubble. Mud volcanoes rarely cause much trouble. But when they get grumpy, things can quickly get very muddy. In Siduajo, Indonesia, mud pours and pours out of the ground. The mud still pours today and has destroyed a whole town. Volcanoes are awesome, that is for sure, but I know that you all want to hear more. There are other wonders than big smoking holes. Not all rocks have come from volcanoes. Of main rock types, geologists know there are three. Igneous rocks have been cooled, metamorphic rocks have been cooked, but it's grains that make the rocks we call sedimentary. Sediments float through the oceans, they drift through rivers and air, from muddy lakes and gravelly beaches to even the dust in your hair. Sediments are made of lime, sand, silt, clay and coal, and if you're looking for oil, they're the best rocks of all. The oil price may be low and making my hair thinner and greyer, but when it comes to sediments, I want to look at every single layer. From an Azeri braided stream bed to the Arctic Devonian old red, look closely and your eyes may pop right out of your head. Sedimentary rocks show the extraordinary features. There are fossils and burrows made by many ancient creatures. There can be crossbeds, ripples, flutes, flames and glacial clasts all of which tell us about environments long ago past. The fossil record is another great wonder to explore. There are algae, stromatolites and tiny little spores. 
Trilobites, ammonites, and many other beasts are regretfully no more. It is sad these things went extinct. I really wanted to ride a dinosaur. I've gotten to see some great Lagerstaaten, I'm very proud to say. I've seen the Jurassic of Jura and the Cambrian at Emu Bay. But in the Fayum Basin of Egypt, hundreds of miles from the Med, lies a desert valley and the most amazing place that I have ever tread. It can be difficult to get to and there can be dangerous people with guns, but over 100 whale skeletons lie there just baking in the sun. They are Eocene cetaceans, some of the first mammals to go back into the seas. We know this because the whales all still have rudimentary knees. This is an incredible treasure trove where marine fossils abound. Every minute I was there, my jaw was dragging on the ground. Pick up any small pile of earth and trickle out the sand, and you'll be left with a dozen shark's teeth in your hand. Eocene oceans must have been amazing, I'm sure you all agree, but we need to go to my home for the oldest animals in the sea. The Neoproterozoic has to be one of the strangest of ages, and if you want to see it best, just go to the Flinders Ranges. The Ediacaran are some of the oldest multicellular biota. There was Sprigina, Morella, Charnia, and huge Dickinsonia. Weird and wonderful animals that were made out of gooey jelly. You can even hear David Attenborough talk about them on the telly. Dolomites and Dimictites reveal one of the craziest times of all, an age when the entire globe from pole to pole was a great big snowball. Can you imagine the entire earth completely covered in ice? Hey, it's summer down here, here down under, so it actually sounds rather nice. But things changed rapidly as volcanoes melted all the glaciers away. The world quickly became a greenhouse and it was crazy hot during the day. On a hillside in the Flinders, near Pichirichi Pass, you may spot a thin, strange layer of Archean granites and shot glass. Yet this is the Bunyaroo Shale. It's a neoproterozoic deep marine clay. How could such ancient rocks get here from so very far away? Well, the Ackerman meteorite crater is from where these rocks have been thrown. Up in the air, for almost 200 miles, these fragments have flown. It would have been scary, no doubt, all those big rocks flying about, shockwaves and fireballs and crashes louder than thunder. It would have been an incredible view filled with terror and wonder. I never want to experience one, but it must be quite a sight. It makes me wonder if the dinosaurs all just died from the sheer fright. Many years ago, I took my geopic to the Reese crater west of Munich. The shock was so strong that millions of tiny diamonds have been found in the impact breccias called Suevites that are used to build the houses all around. The town in Nordlingen has used the crater rim to build a defensive wall, and throughout Bohemia, a lovely glassy green gem called Moldavite did fall. The high latitudes are some of my favourite places. There is so much to see and do in the wide open spaces. There are many animals that are cute, friendly and funny, but be careful, some of them may want you in their tummy. Getting to outcrops near the poles can sometimes be quite hard, but it's worth it to see this spectacular fold and frost belt in Svalbard. Sitting proud and high above the fjords and snow, this tells us about structural processes both fast and slow. Of all the different types of faults, my favourite has to be thrust. If you want to learn about them, a trip to the Moyne is a must. Up in the Scottish Highlands is where thrust fault study began. Hubbard and Ruby showed how they work just by using a beer can. Well, it's a huge world and there's so much more about it that we can talk. There's mountains and earthquakes and beautiful cliffs of English Cretaceous chalk. But I've been talking for a while and you're probably getting tired of my prose. Besides, I got laid off this year and I should really get back to job hunting, I suppose. So I hope you all enjoyed my Dr. Seuss inspired tale. Studying the earth is great, you can never really fail. Sitting at our desks is awesome for earning legal tender, but there is something I want you all to please remember. Your work is not only about seismic logs and core, it's a big planet filled with amazing rocks to explore. So thanks for coming on an adventure with me. Please never forget why you too love geology. 
Go see the world and study every rocky outcrop that you can find. You already have a big brain, but you can always broaden your mind. Go out into the field, walk about and explore the world from end to end. And remember to always make the last field stop each day a drink with a friend.